Let's talk about those moments when you feel like you're trapped in a maze of conflicting advice. You start to have this identity crisis, right? Everyone's telling you to be a certain way. Maybe you need to be more structured or consistent, but at the same time, they or others that you trust are fully convinced that you need to be more flexible and adaptable. It's like being pulled in opposite directions and it leaves you with a feeling of chaos. You know, which way should you go? Who should you be? I mean, picture this. You're navigating a new phase in life and suddenly you've got all these voices, whether it's mentors, friends, family, you know, each with their own take on who you should be. And it's like a, a tug of war for your identity. And you're caught in the middle, not knowing which way to lean. But here's the thing, life is not about choosing extremes. It's about finding that sweet spot in the middle where you can be both structured and adaptable, consistent and flexible. And research backs this up. I mean, studies suggest that embracing a balanced approach to life leads to better well-being and satisfaction. As Albert Einstein once said, Life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving forward. So it's about that continuous forward movement, even when you're uncertain about the path ahead. Don't let the pressure of having it all figured out paralyze you. Just take that first step and keep evolving. Now imagine this scenario. You're faced with a decision that could shape your future. And this is where getting curious with yourself gets interesting. Have a conversation with yourself and get genuinely interested in the responses. Ask yourself open-ended questions, explore different perspectives and listen to your inner voice, right? Build trust in your own judgment and intuition and at the same time embrace the decisive moments. Allow yourself to get good at making decisions. As Maya Angelou wisely said, you may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be reduced by them. Life throws curveballs, but it's your ability to make decisions and adapt that defines you. So redefine your ability to decide. Let me share this uh, study that might resonate According to research in psychology, individuals who navigate identity crisis with a blend of both introspection, having that conversation with yourself, and decisive action, allowing yourself to be good at making decisions, they tend to have higher levels of life satisfaction. So embrace your own unique identity. See, it's in this sweet spot that you'll find fulfillment and authenticity. Let your journey be a masterpiece of both structured strides and flexible dances. And remember, as you navigate this identity maze, you're not alone. So keep moving forward, keep questioning, and most importantly, keep being true to yourself. You have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. I want to tell you about an encounter I had on my morning run. Now, this one taught me a valuable lesson. I was about halfway coming up on one of my rest points when out of the bushes came a cow. Now, this is unusual to say the least. You know, I, I've never seen or heard a cow in my neighborhood, so I was a bit shocked. But then she started yelling at me. Like long sustained cries. Mm, mm, basically telling me, look, you need to back up or I'm going to charge. I don't even know what that would look like. So, yeah, I slowed down and then backed off slowly. You'll come to find out the whole situation wasn't about me at all. When I looked a little closer, I saw a calf behind the bushes. You know, she was just protecting her kid. Then, as I stepped back even further, I realized she had a whole herd of about 20 or 30 cows 
that were on the loose, and they had broken away from the herd. So she was just trying to find her way back while also protecting her calf from getting hurt or more lost. I had no idea. And my first instinct was to judge her for yelling at me. And many times we judge people's behavior based on what we hear in the moment or what we see right in front of us. We don't necessarily look around for context. I know I don't. We don't look behind the bushes or step back to gain perspective to understand what's really going on. We just judge that cow for its aggressive behavior. But it wasn't aggression. It was protection. It was fear. And after a few moments, I I saw her lead her calf back to her family. And they reunited and laid down together. See, I was just in her path. She didn't know how to handle me, so she responded. I mean, for all I know, she could have been asking me for directions, right? Like, like, how can I get back to my herd? I'm freaking out. I'm lost. Have you seen my family? But what I heard was, well, you better step back or I'm coming for you. And Meryl Streep, who I love, has an excellent quote here. She says, The great gift of human beings is that we have the power of empathy. We can all sense a mysterious connection to each other. And even though this was an encounter with a cow, it was like it was like we were connected in some way. And once I stepped back, I felt for her. Like I wanted the best for her, for her entire family out there. So what can I learn here? I need to take a beat. Instead of rushing to judgment or defensiveness, I need to look. I need to look for the full story. And oftentimes, it's not about me. Even though most of the time that's all I see, I may be a small detour, a roadblock when someone's trying to find their way home. Their world, their worries are so much bigger than that little interaction in that moment. And if I can understand, or at least admit that I don't fully understand what they're going through, then I can acknowledge that, look, they're doing the best that they can in that moment. And if I can give people the benefit of the doubt, and I can approach the situation with compassion, with empathy, right? I may not be able to help all the time. I may not be able to take them home, but at least I can remove myself as another roadblock on their journey and in doing so I just hope that I've earned the right to be treated the same way look when I don't show up as my best when I'm caught up in my fears or you know not being completely understood I just hope that others will show me the same grace and help me back to where I belong safely without judgment look this cow was a simple metaphor for how we see people along our journey. And I just hope that I lead with understanding, that I can remove roadblocks and be the compass for others trying to find their way. We all have the power to shape our destiny. So let's go out there and make it happen. We all have something that we're known for, that we're fairly good at. And for me, coaching is what I do. But years ago, when my wife signed me up to coach my five-year-old son's flag football team, that was a completely different story. So what do you do when you're thrown into unexpected waters? I mean, now you're in open water and the ocean and the waves are coming Do you still remember how to swim? And even though you do, it's still a choice in those moments. Yeah, you can stop paddling, stop fighting, just let go and drown, right? Some voice in the back of your head is whispering to you, hey, that would be the much easier option. You can doggy paddle or float using just enough effort to stay above the surface or... You can remind your body and your mind that you know exactly what to do. And you lean in 
and you go. Well, that was the decision I made eight years ago. And that first season, hey, it was a disaster. But then shortly after, I started to find my sea legs. I started to find my breaststroke. I started to figure some things out. And I remembered that I had the skills to make this happen. And today, not only am I still coaching, but now I coach other coaches on how to step onto that field with competence, how to brave those treacherous waters with confidence, not just floating through it. And I empower those coaches to dive in so they can impact not only those kids and yes, their parents, but their entire community. Sometimes we forget how capable we really are. Just because you're thrown into a deeper pool of water doesn't mean you don't know how to swim and swim well. So make the decision and make the choice to lean in, to make the most of it, not only in that situation, but for the entire role that you're in, because you're exactly where you are meant to be. So start kicking, start breathing, and you'll be swimming like you've never swam before. We've all heard the quote, believe you can and you're halfway there from Theodore Roosevelt. Napoleon Hill says, you can do it if you believe you can. Believe in yourself, trust yourself because you are more capable than you can imagine. And remember, you have the power to shape your destiny So go out there and make it happen. I was in a band once, and we had a great time performing and writing songs together. But the good times on stage and with friends is not what I remember most about that time. What I remember most is a very simple lesson from one of my bandmates that sticks with me to this day. We were recording an album and I asked him about hitting the gym. He said, hey man, I I made a decision that working out is not a priority. I need to hang out with my son instead. It was very clear that he had made a choice about what to do with his limited resource, time. And this was before I had kids, I had just, finished my 32nd day of Insanity Max 30 and I was a little puzzled by his decision to just cut out gym time. And I was feeling incredible in my own choices, you know, working out, eating healthy, putting my my body first and to be honest, I, I was judging him hard. But as I reflected on that conversation over the years and especially After having kids and starting my own dad journey, I realized how wrong I was. We only have so much time, and we hear that all the time, but sometimes we need to hear it again. With our limited time, we have to make very clear choices. What will we do with it? What will we prioritize? Where are we going in life? And is our decision about time aligned with that path? My friend, with just a few words, and probably without even knowing it, taught me one of the best lessons ever. Choose how you want to spend your precious time. And he made great choices with his time. Today, he's the CEO of a very successful startup, and he has an incredible family. Why? Because he learned to say no to the things that came second. They might have you know, mattered to everyone else, but he realized early on what he wouldn't have time for, and without hesitation, he said no to those things. He focused on what mattered, what he knew he would have time for, and shut down everything else, regardless of what others thought. So what can we learn? Yeah, I need to say no some things and be 100% okay with that. I need to be clear on what really matters to me and, and to the people I care about so that 
I know how to prioritize. I need to let go of the person I'm not so that I can fully invest and embrace who I am and who I'm going to be. And I need to remember that my priorities right now are not everyone else's priorities. And they may not be my priorities later, so I should never judge someone else on their own priorities or be too hard on myself when mine change. You know, we have the power to shape our destiny. So let's go out there and make it happen. If I were looking for gold and I had a treasure map, and let's say there's a wide open field in front of me, I'd start searching. And once I found that X, that X marks the spot, I'd start to dig, right? And I'd dig and I'd dig. And at some point I'd have a choice. Do I continue to dig or do I quit? Saying, nope, I've had enough. There is no gold here. Walk away. Well, we've all seen the image of the person searching for gold and they hit that critical point where they have to choose and they say no. They quit and they walk away. But if they just would have dug two to three more times, boom, they would have found that gold. But look, the same is true for us in sales, in our relationships, in leadership. In our conversations, we have a map. Right? We're listening for that X marks the spot. And maybe the X is the hot button. Maybe it's a need. Maybe it's a pain, right? a goal. And once we find it, we start to dig. Right? We're searching for that goal. Maybe it's the motivation. Maybe it's their, their why. Whether we're trying to close a sale, we're trying to build a relationship, we're, we're trying to lead them from where they are to where they want to go, right? Look, listening is one of the most important skills that we can master. And, and often we get it wrong. You know, many times we listen to the press. This is just staying at the surface, digging a little here, digging a little bit there, and our field is filled with these little potholes. Or maybe we're listening to learn, right? We're, we're digging and digging and digging and digging, and but we're digging for us. And when it comes time to quit, hey, we've had enough, we're good, we move on. It's about us, not them. But that gold, that treasure can only be found when we listen to understand. And what does that look like? And what does that feel like, more importantly? Well, it's simply parking in that one spot, in that one moment, and we dig. We are committed. Maybe we're asking two to three more questions out of curiosity, out of genuine care. When we think that we have found enough, we continue to dig. And that is when the magic happens. That's where we find the gold that we're looking for. That's where we build that relationship. We earn the right to share our value that we have in our pocket. Maybe that's when we find the ability, exactly what we need to take them from where they are to where they want to go. It becomes about them and how we can serve and how we can make their life better. And isn't that the most important treasure we can find? So keep digging. You have no idea how close you are. And when you're ready to stop, just dig two or three more times. And look, you'll find the gold you're looking for. What would happen if you gave max effort to everything you did? From relaxation to what you do in front of people, I mean, what would happen if you gave absolutely everything you have, but you did it across the board? You give max effort at home. You give max effort with your friends. You give max effort at work. You give max effort on that side hustle. 
You give max effort in the meeting. You give max effort during your naps. You even give max effort during sleep. You give max effort. You push yourself to the max. I think about a car and you push it to the absolute max. Whether it's a minivan, SUV, pickup, work van, Ferrari, sports car, right? You use it to its max potential. That Tesla is drained because you maxed it out. But it can always recharge. And so can you. You can always recharge. If you ever attend one of my training sessions, I always ask at the very beginning, whether you're with me for an hour or a full day, I ask for max effort. Now, if you're in the military or a first responder, you don't have a choice. You have to put in max effort. But most of us, we have that choice. I'm going to share something that might be a, a bit controversial, but I trust you. I like to take naps, but for that 15 or 20 minutes, I'm putting in max effort. I mean, I'm turning everything else off and giving every single thing I have to that nap, and it fulfills its purpose. I'm refreshed and ready to max it out on the next project. What does it look like in your life to put max effort everywhere? If your friends or family are not getting max effort from you, how can you adjust that? Even for just 10 minutes that you're hanging out with them. Last night, my son said, Dad, can you sit and watch the movie? And I said, no. He said, Dad, I mean, come on, please. I said, no, I have to go relax because look, I've got this and that tomorrow. I have to put max effort somewhere else, I'm sorry. And I had in my mind one direction that I was heading, but he needed my max effort right there. So finally he asked one more time, come on, Dad. I mean, just think about it. How awesome would it be to just hang out with me? Wow. Well, he stole my attention and got my max effort. I turned everything else off and just hung out with him. We have to be open to adjust, but when we give that max effort, then we have options to shift or adjust as needed without feeling guilty or stressed. Just try to give max effort because we don't have much time in each of the compartments of our life. Look, we have to give max effort and then people will know that we were there and that's what matters. I left something that the next day my son can say, my dad hung out with me last night and it was awesome and that matters. It's obviously a work in progress. Another quick story, this time on the opposite side. Yesterday, my wife was putting max effort into rearranging this room and that room. And look, I was, I was putting in max effort somewhere else. But I could have put max effort with her in that moment for a couple of hours. I could have built a stronger, deeper relationship with my wife and put that max effort in right there. But instead, I wasn't open. And because earlier I had put in half effort on what I was working on, I felt that stress. And I couldn't flex or adjust for what I now see was a massive opportunity with my wife. So there are consequences to choosing half versus max effort. Speaking of reduced productivity and outcomes based on effort, Multitasking has become a major focus, especially for the younger generation. And look, I get it. But if we're not able to put in max effort, then our productivity actually drops. We see about a 40% dip when we try to do too many things at once. But if we give our specific attention for a little bit of time and compartmentalize that, then all of a sudden we'll see our productivity jump about 80% and thus a leap in results. We will, in turn, make more of an impact, make more of a legacy, make more memories, right? create more experiences. We just put in max effort in the places that matter the most. And that's my challenge to myself, to prioritize. Even if that means getting help from somebody else to do that. 
I need to step back, identify where I need to increase my effort, where I need to decrease my time, and then go full speed ahead and commit to putting max effort in the places that I care about most. I invite you to join me in this challenge. I believe we all have a lot more to give. And look, we have the power to shape our destiny. So let's go out there and make it happen. I want to talk about a common phenomenon that we all experience on the road, in our careers, and in life. Now, I'm sure you've been there, but you're sitting in traffic and you're watching the lane next to you move a little faster. So what do you do? Just like all of us, it's like office space. We switch lanes, hoping to save some time and get ahead, but guess what happens next? Yeah. The lane that we were in starts speeding up, leaving us frustrated and stuck, right? I mean, we can feel it. I can feel it. Life often throws obstacles in our path. And just like that slow moving lane, when we encounter challenges, we tend to look for an easier route, jumping from one option to another, seeking instant gratification. And we become what I like to call jumpers. Now we think we're making progress, but in reality, we're only creating a cycle of frustration and stagnation. I mean, think about it. How many times have you abandoned a goal, a project, as soon as it became difficult? How many times have you been tempted to take the easy road only to find yourself back at square one because it was hard? Well, it's time to break free from this pattern and embrace a different mindset, a mindset that leads to true progress, to success. Famous basketball coach, John Wooden, he has this quote that's super relevant here. He says, stay the course when thwarted, basically when things get hard, (laughs) try again, harder, smarter, persevere relentlessly. Albert Einstein said, in the middle of difficulty lies opportunity. But traffic may seem small and insignificant. But by constantly hopping, jumping from lane to lane, we condition our minds to accept that this jumping from one thing to another is okay. We lose focus, we lose direction, and ultimately we lose sight of our true potential. So here's the challenge. Start staying put. Embrace the frustration, the discomfort that comes with it, and condition your mind to say, it's okay, I'll get there. And remember, seeing someone else seamlessly get ahead faster doesn't tell the whole story. Success is not just about the speed of progress, but the quality of it. We don't know the story. So let's take the lesson, this simple lesson from traffic, and apply it to our careers, to our life. Commit to that one lane, that lane that aligns with your goals, your passions, and your dreams, and stop hopping around aimlessly. I used to tell this story in New Hire Training about a field, and at the end of our lives, we're going to have this field that represents our life. And it will either look like a prairie dog field with tons of little holes where We dug a little, then jumped, you know, dug a little bit more, then jumped, then dug a little bit more, or it will have a very deep well filled with water that can serve others for generations to come. So what will your field look like? I invite you to stay put, to dig in. It's time to let go of being a jumper. It's when we stay the course, as Coach Wooden says, confront the frustration head on and push through that we build resilience, expertise, and ultimately extraordinary results. So let's start by embracing this simple exercise. The next time we find ourselves in traffic, stay in that one lane, resist the urge to jump and observe how it feels. Use this as a reminder that success requires focus. It requires patience and the willingness to face challenges head on. And by doing so, we'll not only accelerate our success, but also cultivate a mindset of unwavering determination. 
As Winston Churchill put it, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. So keep going with resilience, patience, and focus. And remember, you have the power to shape your destiny. So go out there and make it happen. In a world filled with challenges where the road seems long and the climb appears so steep, there lies a hidden strength within you. Don't underestimate the power of transformation. Imagine a butterfly, delicate yet resilient, emerging from its cocoon. Its wings vibrant, soaring higher than ever before, but What about the time in between, the before, the after? That's where the magic happens. You're just like a butterfly, you are in the midst of your own transformation. So don't let the doubts, the judgments, that awkward phase, right, hold you back. Embrace the process, embrace the journey. Sure. Some may question your choices, they may doubt your abilities, but remember this, you cannot be clipped prematurely. You cannot be confined to the easy road. Your transformation requires time, dedication, and unwavering belief. So don't give up. Don't quit when things get tough. Push through the barriers and keep going. Put in the work, the effort, the time, the energy, right? Stay committed to your goals and follow the process step by step like a recipe for success. As Maya Angelou, the great poet, once said, we delight in the beauty of the butterfly but rarely admit the changes it has gone through to achieve that beauty. Embrace the changes. Embrace the transformation that unfolds within you. Yes, there may be setbacks. There may be moments when you stumble and you fall. But that's not the end of the story. Rise up. Dust yourself off. Keep moving forward. Remember, you're not alone on this journey. Together, we will soar. And when you spread your wings... Reaching new heights, the world will witness your transformation. They will marvel at your strength, your resilience, and your determination. Don't retreat back to the familiar. Don't allow yourself to be confined to the cocoon. You are destined for greatness. Believe it with every fiber of your being. So listen to these words, embrace them, let them fuel your spirit, ignite your fire, stay focused, stay committed, and soon you will emerge as the butterfly, ready to conquer the skies. Keep going, keep pushing, keep transforming. You are unstoppable. And together, we will all fly higher than ever before. <laughs>